So I got another tattoo on my chest, which is my wife's name. It's just, you know, fun, spunky kind of thing that I decided to do. Below this in runic is Rahoa, which stands for racial holy war. Some stories are sealed in skin. Every tattoo I ever get, it got some type of meaning behind it. This is permanent. It's never going to leave me. This is the kind of the demon of my past. The plot painted on with pain. Dolor is Latin and Spanish for pain. The moral deeper than any words. The voice is just, uh, it's, it's always been there. And um, the tattoos, uh, yeah, they've been growing on me since I was... 14. But to see the burden Arno Michaels bears, look below the surface. So, yeah. This is the character he carves out for himself in the mid 80s and early 90s. Well, I got up there and I, I screamed real loud. And I got people crazy. Michaels is the lead singer of the hate metal band Centurion at the time. They play in mostly dark bars and basements, any place that permits their drunken, racist ranting. It was a seven year keg party with racism and violence. <laughs> Back then, he's one of the heads of the Milwaukee White Power Movement, a founder of the racist skinhead group, the Northern Hammerskins. It was revealed to me that white people are my people. Michael's past is littered with lost lives, ruined by racism. One of them had a 25 pistol. In 1990, an 18-year-old he'll only identify as Chuck is drawn to the deadly skinhead lifestyle. Soon after, the young recruit picks a fight with a Latino gang, and he's buried because of his bigotry. He took one shot, and it hit Chuck in the back. And it went right through his heart, and he died on the spot. The death only enrages the racist crew. We played it off like, you know, what's this world coming to when a white man came and walked down the street without being murdered by these savages? And so it goes for years. The music plays, the booze flows, and hate rules Michael's life. <laughs> 20 years later, yeah. These days, it's hard to envision that violent man in the Centurion video. How old do you think I am? <laughs> like 28. <laughs> I'll go, I'll take it. Now at age 40, you'll find Michaels in a very different place. <laughs> Here he's laughing in the quiet corner of a Milwaukee inner city library with mostly minority students. We literally had blinders up. To, to deny all this information from the world around us that indicated that other people were as human as we were. The now reformed racist shares his dead friend's story as a lesson worth learning. It's really poignant, tragic evidence that hate and violence begets hate and violence. I thought, oh man, this is going to be scary. This, this is my meeting with the scary skinhead. In the school full of like 75% black African American. But he came right through the door and his human warmth, you know, preceded him. Michael's journey from hardened hammer skin to self-proclaimed peace activist actually begins with more racism. We felt it was our duty to have white children. And it's the birth of his innocent little girl that finally makes Michaels feel guilty about everything. I was like, what, what the hell did I start here? What am I doing? So in the mid-90s, he begins leaving the movement he helped mastermind. As the violence and hatred was lost that constant reinforcement, it began to make less sense. And it's not long before Michaels is left reflecting on the ramifications of the life he lived. I think about my daughter and how much I love her. 
And I think of how I feel if somebody ever hurt her. And then I, I ask myself, how, how did that kid's parents feel after you got done with them? By 2004, the former skinhead finds himself sober, sorry, and with a plan to reconcile his past and save his very soul. The impetus to begin writing this book was really my own sanity. My Life After Hate by Arno Michaels is published last December. It's really a message for everybody, regardless of their age, that decisions you make and the actions you take have consequences. But writing the book isn't enough. Composing in coffee shops across the North Shore, every keystroke spreads his message through a blog and online magazine, lifeafterhate.org. When I was your age, I was already cutting out of school. Pacing back and forth in front of a larger crowd of Kenosha students, Michael shares his shadowy past. Kindness, not weakness, is about setting an example. And kindness, not weakness, is more than just a catchy phrase for Michaels. It's an anti-bullying program he's launching with former gang member Sammy Rangel, who used to be a Latin disciple. Two different mindsets all together, but still so similar on this other side. There were things that... Uh, just drew us together. I was really touched by our story, man. Thanks a lot, man. That's great to hear. It's like a symbolization of my grandparents. And that's kind of what I got in my back. These knuckles had NHS for Northern Hammer skinheads and a big swastika here. Today, Michael's tattoos tell the tale of how he turned his life around. Having them removed hurt way worse than getting them. He says he's proof every picture, no matter how permanent. It was a pretty horrible theme for a tattoo can be redrawn. My response is, if, if you don't believe me, just uh, watch what I do. So Michaels will just keep using the ugly images of his past. It's somewhat symbolic of the devil and angel on either shoulder. To ink what he hopes is a life-saving story. It's the only reason I can do what I'm doing.